evolution. Uh, people look at uh, funerals as uh, a sad time. It's not the end, it's the beginning of the rest of eternity. And Nanny is already there. So she'll wait on us, and we'll try to do our best to be faithful to her in the scripture. Before I read the obituary, let's, uh, let's pause and have a moment of prayer with you. Heavenly Father, we gather in this place today to fulfill your word in Gladys' life. And Lord, we recognize that this is just the beginning of the rest of eternity for her. What a joy she's having right now being in your presence. Lord, we too would like to take a lesson from Nanny. To know the Lord, to love the Lord, to obey the Lord in all that she could. And Lord, may that be our prayer today. We ask your, your peace your mercy and your grace upon this service. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gladys, <laughs> Manny, Lord, depending on who you are and where you're from, depending on which one of those names you use. <laughs> Here in Plant City, she was born in Dothan, Alabama, on September 14, 1922, and went home to be with the Lord on January 9, 2018. You know, the one thing that stuck out on everybody that I went to who knew Gladys, I did not have that joy and that privilege to know Gladys and her husband. But everyone said over and over, what a loving, giving person she was. She loved her family. And outside of her family, the joy of her life was cooking, probably baking pancakes. <laughs> and we get a chance to taste that one outside that won't last long after. <laughs> she enjoyed cooking. She was preceded in death by her husband John and daughter Shirley. She is survived by her daughter Carol and son in law Jack Brower. A uh, number of grandchildren, among which is uh, Jason Sittman, Jennifer Sittman, Kimberly Williams. Melanie Lee Smith, Nicholas Mitchell, and Kevin Mitchell. And there were 12 great grandchildren. So, I want to begin with a passage of scripture that I feel represents Nanny. Mm -hmm. We find this in the uh, book of Proverbs. Chapter 31, and down toward the end of this, of this particular section of scripture, it says this, she watches over her family and never wastes her time. Her children speak well of her. Her husband also praises her, saying, there are many fine women but you are better than all of them. Charm can fool you and beauty can trick you, but a woman who respects the Lord should be praised. <clears throat> Give her the reward she has earned. She should be praised in public for what she has done. And that's why we're here today, to fulfill this scripture and praise her for what she has done and what she has been as a testimony to every one of us. 
So we're going to hear from a couple of the grandchildren, and then we'll have another passage of scripture and share a video with you.
who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the truth of that song will be ours one day. I have another passage I want to, to share. All of these are coming primarily from Proverbs 31. You know anything about that passage of Scripture? It, uh, it's entitled in, in many Bibles as The Good Wife. And it, it speaks very well of one who knows the Lord, and especially today, it speaks well of Gladys. It says, It's hard to find a good wife because she is worth more than rubies. Her husband trusts her completely. With her, he has everything he needs. She does him good and not harm for as long as she lives. She looks for wool and flax and likes to work with her hands. She is like a, a trader's ship bringing food from far away. She gets up while it's still dark and prepares food for her family and feeds her servant girls. She inspects the field and buys it. With money she earns, she plants the vineyard. She does her work with energy and her arms are strong. All of these attributes are what I call love in action. And it is so appropriate for people to, when they speak of, of Manny, they speak of her love she had for everybody. And so these that I've just read are, are actions of love. I think now we have a, a video we're going to show that will give you an idea of some of those love actions from Nanny.
a glimpse of Manny's life. And I'm sure has had impressions upon the family and close friends for a long, long time. I have one more passage of scripture I want to read, and now I'm going to give any of you who might have a short testimony you'd like to give about her. It's in, uh, again, in Proverbs. It says, She looks forward to the future with joy. She speaks wise words and teaches others to be kind. She watches over her family and never wastes her time. Her children speak well of her. Her husband also praises her, saying, There are many fine women, but you are better than all of them. Charm can fool you. Beauty can trick you, but a woman who respects the Lord should be praised. Give her the reward she has earned. She should be praised and public for what she has done. Now I think we have two others who want to come and share something with us. Come. and lots more or love you bunches and bunches. N is for nostalgic. She loved Coca-Colas. We have one here today. Nanny also wore her hair in the same hairstyle which was a roller set style for the last 55 years or more. I spent many a days watching her hair dry underneath the dryer. The second N is for nurturing. Nanny nurtured not only with love, but with food. She made sure your favorite food was cooking in a pot on the stove. No one left her house hungry. Y is for yummy. For all the yummy foods she would cook, bake, or can. Favorites like chicken and dumplings, hot pepper jelly, and her famous pound cake which was baked for every occasion. Nanny will be greatly missed as she was an inspiration to all, a legacy all of her own. 